Good morning, John. What is going on here? This is a Dr. Pepper can, and it's never been opened, and it is doing this. And it feels like it's super thin, like it's a weird aluminum, but it's only because aluminum cans are actually, they're very fragile, except that they have high tensile strength, so when they're being inflated by the pressure inside of them, they actually get quite strong. When they're not, they're weak and flappy, but this has never leaked. It's never been opened, but it's not got pressure in it. So let's open the normal one. So that sounded normal. Now let's open this. My guess is it's gonna sound different. Yeah. This is a flat Dr. Pepper. What's happening? Normal Dr. Pepper tastes like regular Dr. Pepper. And then this barest, tiniest tingle. Authentic blend of 23 flavors, but a missed one. So I guess the carbonation is necessary to make a Coke can feel like a Coke can. Otherwise, when it gets cold, all of the gas inside contracts, and then you get a weird deflated Coke can. I guess. If anybody has any better theories than that, let me know. John, I've been thinking a lot about stories recently uh, because I've been working on my own, because I've just read yours. And because it's the day after the 30th anniversary of Star Trek The Next Generation, most formative piece of media in my life. So there's a guy who I never thought about when I was a young person, didn't know he existed, but who had a tremendous impact on me. Michael Piller was the showrunner for Star Trek The Next Generation from the third season to the end of the show. The last couple years he shared that duty with Jerry Taylor. These people wrote a lot of episodes of Star Trek, but also managed the writing room. Showrunning is a thing that back then, in the 90s, wasn't thought about by normal people, certainly not by me. I was like 11. I was just watching an interview with Michael Piller today and he was saying that uh, they once went in with an idea for a show and talked to Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, about it. And the episode was like an adventurous chase across the universe. And Gene said, what's it about? And they were like, well, it's about an adventurous chase across the universe. But the thing about Star Trek The Next Generation, the thing that I don't find too often these days in TV sci-fi, is that it was always about something. Like, it was about the plot, but I feel like if they were gonna sacrifice plot or meaning, they were gonna sacrifice plot first. It's so easy to write a story about good versus evil and spaceships blowing up. It's hard to write a story about disability or racism or what it means to be human or like super cheesy stuff like the value of honesty, right? That's a hard thing to write about these days. Like we're no longer the West Wing world. We are the house of cards world. I'm a, and I'm a little bit sick of it. And I think it's kind of boring. I wanna know what's it about. And if you tell me it's about how messed up the world is and just evil people doing evil things, I'm done. I'm done with it. I don't want it anymore. Give me stories that are about something and something that I can be hopeful about, maybe? I mean, it's hard, right? Don't get me wrong. When people ask me what's Turtles All the Way Down about, the first thing I think about isn't the plot, which is great. Like, it's very interesting. Like, he kept me hooked throughout the whole book. It's the themes. It's how do we maintain relationships with people who have problems with their brains? How do we understand people who experience the world in fundamentally different ways than we do? How is that a thing with people's brains just working differently, but also in a world with such dramatic inequality as we have right now? You know nothing about what happens in the book from what I said, but maybe you know what it's about, which is a thing that I feel like we're not necessarily asking ourselves in today's media enough. I think I learned from Star Trek The Next Generation which I hope you all, all will join me in watching a ton of this weekend on Netflix. That themes are as important, sometimes more important than plot. Because diversion is kind of the least of what a story can offer us. So we have to think about the stories that our world is built upon and that ourselves are built upon, which is, it turns out, a great way to create media, whether it's video blogs or books or TV shows. John, I'm really proud of you and your book. I cannot wait for other people to read it, and I'll see you on Tuesday.